Hello, good morning. Uh, welcome to News of the Press, the program where we review the national dailies, dissect the, all the news that is making headlines. And with me in the studio this morning is Ekene. Mm, good to be here. Ekene, welcome back from your short break. Yeah, please don't remind me that it was short. <laughs> well, mm. it's good. I'm to, refreshed. You're refreshed. You yeah. look it, and yeah. it's good to have you back Thank and you. to be having this conversation with you this morning. Mm -hmm. So we're beginning with our first paper here, which is the punch. And from the first page here, we see that $9.6 billion British firm listing Nigeria assets for seizure. We also have Taraba Killings Army to court martial soldiers in Joss. You find that on page two. And then Nigeria and the US working to curb online fraud. Presidency says so. You find it on page 20 of the punch. And Nigeria's leadership degenerating progressively, says Obi, Peter Obi. You find that on page 20 also. And down here, you see, we see CBN sets limits for bank on non-performing loans. You find that on page 32 of the Punch newspaper. And the man molests, impregnates 16-year-old um, pupil. We find that sad news on page 5. And um, Afeni Ferrer meets Akintoye, denies Yoruba leadership talk. Find that on page three. Ekene, which are the stories making big, big news? For well, you this I, I guess we should start with this, um, this court case ruling that went against us. Um, mm -hmm. um, already, the firm, an Irish firm, I hear, aggressively identifying Nigerian assets in England that they're willing to use to basically exact that ruling. Mm. Um, I think we were posturing a bit when the, when the news first broke. Mm. We're sort of saying we're going to challenge it. I'm not sure if we're going to carry on with that tone. Apparently this firm has had dealings with, with us, us in Nigeria for over 30 years, they claim. I, I, I would put it to you that, that that relationship is coming to an end, mm. no matter how this swings, right? because I'm, I'm sure however it ends up, we're not going to be rushing to get into bed with them in the future. But this is an interesting case because it began as early as 2010, during Yadua's tenure. So the it's argument- years ago. Yes, and the, the argument we're making in defense of why we haven't kept up to our side of the bargain, which is why we're being slammed with 9.6 yeah, billion, billion dollars, dollars, quite a lot, a lot is money. that um, there was a lacuna in, in, in governance then because Yardua wasn't well, this was a period. So, um, but my own take so far is that, you know, the, the case being brought against us, because $9.6 billion, if you start looking at Nigerian assets to the tune of that amount, is a hefty sum. It's mm -hmm. going to cripple us in, in ways we haven't quite calculated. Um, but essentially, if we look at it from that perspective where we're saying that, you know, the cause, at least the alleged cause of, of, of our mismanagement, they have put firmly in the camp of the governance, those mm -hmm. in governance, they call it tardiness in, in terms of those who were managing the contract. I would like to see a situation where if this case actually went against us, was followed through, those who were responsible could be identified and they, to a large extent, will foot the bill. Because I, find, I, know, I don't know if legally that can be maneuvered, but I just feel you're not going to get away with being mismanaging Nigeria's assets, mm. not delivering on a contract when it was your fault, and then Nigeria takes Take a fall for it. it. But let's see, it's still in court, so let's see how it all unfolds. Okay, the whole story of the Taraba uh, killings, Ami has said they are going to court martial the soldiers in Jaws. What are your thoughts on that? I, I hate to sound like I'm being strict or maybe not appreciative of how things, I'm happy Wadume was uh, rearrested. I'm mm -hmm. happy that they're taking the process through, due process is following. But when I read it, I was slightly disappointed to see that the best they could say is that these men could be you know, basically sacked, mm. laid off. I, I don't know, for people who lost their lives, for families of the police officers and the civilian who lost their lives, is that enough? Yeah, what, what <laughs> I, I, I wonder if that's enough. You know, the fact that you, you, you're not allowed to come back to work, I'm not sure that that's a satisfactory penalty for people who were and killed. And even is there a closure, some sort of closure for even family members that have lost their own? Because, yes. you know, uh, we had that conversation in uh, last week when uh, our Northern Bureau Chief Amadine was here. And he said, you know, this court martial and dismissal is not enough. You know, I'm glad someone else has seen it from yes, that perspective. You know, so because and even when you look at the intricacies, sorry, of this case, you know, I'm, I'm just still, my mouth is, is hanging wide open when I consider some of the allegations he's made. He's saying yeah. he was sponsored by the APC. He's saying he gives you a figure of how much he was given. I'm, I'm really, I mean, some have argued that, oh, maybe he shouldn't, they, you know, they, they haven't played their hand very well, the prosecutors, by putting it out in the public domain, making it a trial by media. But I suspect if this goes as deep as he's alleging, the, the only safety they have is to have a trial by media where it's all in open show. Because if such powerful people are behind mm -hmm. such uh, wrongdoing, 
they're very likely to swallow up the evidence if yeah. you don't put it out there. So I would say, look, keep pursuing this thing in the public domain Let's and do everything you can to see that this, this, this matter doesn't rest. Mm, we hope it doesn't rest mm. in that way. And then Nigeria and US working to curb online fraud. Ekene, there's been a lot of conversation from obi Wanne to mm. the 18 Nigerians to, you know, what are your thoughts, you know, from I, hashtags? I guess the elephant in the room for me is that, you know, you, people can't help but identify tribalistic, you say, um, groupings. So mm -hmm. you say, oh, I looked at the, the list of the people who were charged, and the first thing that stood out were most of these people are Igbo Ibos. people. And I hung my head in shame because I'm like, wow, so. what a day for Ndibo. But, mm -hmm. you know, you have to move away from that. You have to, you know, because apparently on, it, what was trending on social media was, oh, Igbo, Yahoo boys, and mm. then against the Saudi Arabian, Yoruba, you know, yes, yeah. <laughs> um, drug barons. And you look at it, and it's not getting us anywhere. So this is slightly more pro productive when you say, let's work together to curb it. But some would say you should even go further back and say, what is causing these people to go out and look for greener pastures by any means necessary? Mm -hmm. We're not even talking about people who go and make themselves sex slaves and things that, you know, compromise them for life in a much more fundamental way. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not trying to give them any sort of uh, excuse. But I'm saying that people need to now look even further and say, why are we having so many of our young minds and ability? Because it takes a lot to, to maneuver such things yes, as they have. Yes, the, the most so, be a level of smartness. I mean, yeah, not just to have, to have deceived them yes, for so long. Yeah, mm, so, not justifying that, but mm, there must be a level of smartness. An that, application. Mm -hmm, so we need to is there nothing into... we can do about you know, turning our young people away from crime towards a more productive enterprise? And, and is it, are we partly to blame for the fact that they find themselves in a situation where they are looking at this as a big, mm, a serious option, yeah. Mm, sad one there, mm. anyways. Uh, like you said, it's not about um, tribe now, because when they talk about this, they say Nigerians. Nobody knows who it's whether, whether yes, you're it's evil. It's only or, some of us that are looking just, at the names. Yeah, it's just, mm. but again, there's something good that happened over the weekend, which is that another hashtag, um, started trending okay 80 nigerians but that hashtag was to say name nigerians that you know are doing well at home and in the diaspora okay. you okay. know that's trying to counter but you yes know, the bad image publicity is still bad it sticks publicity. it sticks much harder yeah, but than we hope that uh, somehow we'll uh, get through this period redeemed. yes yeah. so having said that to so say um peter obi is saying that uh, leadership in nigeria is degenerating progressively mm. it's going like we're growing in in the negative uh, light in that way. What are your thoughts? Well, well, again, I don't want to give that one too much oxygen in the sense that either he's stating the obvious or really we need to look for the way forward. I, I, we all see this and, and moaning about it. I know it may seem like I'm demeaning what he's saying by calling it a moan, but you know, there was a period where we had a lot of this. Shoenka was saying, Professor Shoenka was saying his own. We had, um, or Haneze was saying, you know, everybody's mm. saying the same thing. But Let's try and take a little break from that because, you know, like you're saying, if it's, is it better for us to focus on the things that aren't working for us or is it better for us to look for ways to move forward? To there work. must be a way forward out of this quagmire and I'm not sure continuing to point fingers at degenerating leadership, would you do better if mm -hmm. you were in their position? So let's look for active solutions, you know, at least prefer them, even but if again, you are not in a position to. Again, people say, if you don't name things, yes. if you don't call it what it is, it will continue to fester and becomes the norm. <laughs> I guess maybe what I'm saying is that we've been calling it what it is for too long now. So I think it's getting action. a bit stagnant. Yeah, <laughs> it's time for us to look at another way to progress things. All right, thank you, Akene, for your thoughts there. So we're moving on to the Nation newspaper and uh, from the front page again, we see um, a ministerial snob, a shock, says she too. You find that on page five, and then Southwest security outfit set to begin. Same on page five of the Nation newspaper. Victims ide identify Wadumi as kidnapper. In fact, just a quick one. Um, while our Northern Bureau chief was here, uh, Amadine, he, he tried to gi give me uh, a background to the name. Okay. You know, Wadumi uh, is his nickname. Okay. But he says, the guy used to say, what do you mean? So trying to say, what oh, do really? you mean? Yes, that, that's, well, that's the pronunciation. <laughs> so he came up with Wadumi. So it's, his nickname is Wadumi. So Seriously. Big team. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure not many have, people knew that. Yes, we didn't know because we, we've been calling him Wadumi. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to give it a, an intonation that sounds northern. Yeah, yeah. so Wadumi. Uh, <laughs> um, victims identify him as kidnapper. You find that on page five. And then uh, Keamo, FBI suspect my friend, page six. 
and then Nigeria wins two gold at games. Okay. That's some good news there. Yes. And then Antigraft Agency probing uh, $150 million given to official. You find that on the front page. And then Buhari, Sonwolu, and Zulum Abdurasag off to Japan. For what exactly? Yes, there? yes. Um, there's um, this event where they're doing trade agreements, so to speak. I mean, apparently, this is the second uh, conference that uh, our president has attended. He mm -hmm. attended the first one in 2016 in Kenya, I believe. Um, my interest, I'm happy he's taking people like Sonwolu, fresh. Mm -hmm fresh people yes um, fresh but I, what I would like to know is do we have a record of what we achieved last time we went because a lot of times when mm -hmm. even when we had the African trade agreement and we got excited the criticism was that clearly we're a market for other people so they will want to woo us they have things to offer us because we have the population mm -hmm. um, but what are we offering them in return so what was our strategy last time and mm -hmm. what were our achievements and you know, so we need to do a kind of Evaluation. stock take. Yeah, we don't just keep going on these conferences as if it's the thing to do to be seen to be making progress. Let's chart it. Let's make it transparent. So, what's your strategy this time around? You know, um, what are you putting on the ground? How will you measure it so that we, the the people watching, whom you're negotiating on our behalf, mm -hmm. we can see what you're doing and it can at least buoy us a little bit at this time when it looks like not much is going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, so there is this one also. Um, Kayame, uh, Kayamo rather, and the FBI suspect, the, the, the sus FBI suspect, my friend. There's a picture that emerged of him. I don't okay. know if you saw that no. online. Okay, of one of the suspects uh, held by the FBI. There was a picture of himself and Kayamo okay. that emerged online uh, over the weekend. Okay. And I, I believe that's what he's referring to, that um, he's his friend. So some people are saying, well, you know this person. If you know this person, should we be worried? It may not necessarily <laughs> be the case. Yes, I mean, it got me thinking, actually. There was one mm. of the characters, the FBI... Um, uh, I think they've indicted him, one of the, the, the names on that list, and there are videos all around of his wife's baby shower mm. and the people around who were spraying money. And I said to myself, you know, once upon a time they would have been happy to be seen spraying money now. I'm sure those people are wondering, yeah. why did I show face at that event? Mm -hmm. Because suddenly, you know, they're, they're witnesses, if you like, are there, or what would you call them, appendages? Mm -hmm. So everybody is now maybe looking for where to hide themselves. I'm but, trying to be careful. Mm, mm, I, I think, well, it serves us do. right to some extent. I think we're too ostentatious, and sometimes that in itself is something we need to look at. Why are mm -hmm. we so captivated by money in a way that makes it look like we don't understand the value I mean, of sometimes it? Sometimes it's just, I, I, I do feel that it's worrying when I see, you know, people go to occasion and all of that show of spray money. Mm, even a young boy was carrying the money and throwing <laughs> as if it was raining. And you I'm know, thinking, like, what are you teaching this young yeah, boy? Yeah, what is it about? That, that exactly. crime pays, at, you know, as long as you get the money, it doesn't matter. Mm. So there's a lot really to look into in, in that whole affair. All right, victims that identify Wajimi as kidnapper, that's who he is, isn't it? He, well, you know, he was claiming he didn't, apparently. You know, he said he didn't kidnap. He, he said he did um, the various things he agreed to doing, but not kidnapping, strangely oh. enough. <laughs> So yes, it, it's worthwhile that the victims are identifying him. You know, I don't know how troubled you are, but this continues to stay in my head, and yeah. I'm still trying to puzzle it. Why the people where he lives, why his, his um, home people, are saying, no, please, this guy was a philanthropist, that he, mm. built us, he built us boreholes, he set up a mosque. Again, it's this mentality where we're happy to separate the source of the money from the money. Mm -hmm. So it tells me again that we have a very strange relationship with money and mm -hmm. we need to look at that as a nation, you know, mm -hmm. because I think that's where the root of all these uh, problems mm -hmm. stem from. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, when they talked about where he was, um, where they rearrested him, Hotoro, somewhere in Kano, you would, you would never imagine that that's a place to find such people because mm. it's a, one of the best estates in Kano. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, he has, some, he has backing he, of some powerful so people. So you'll be shocked. And, and actually, his account, it sounded so casual. He said, look, they arrested me. Yes. The army people set me free. I went to my house. And then they came. He, so he wasn't hiding. He, mm -hmm. was, he was relaxing somewhere. And they came, came and across. took him again. He, yeah, he, came across he, he wasn't at all threatened mm. by, by this arrest. Anyways, we'll see where all of that will go to. So, and um, that's it for the Nation newspaper. Behind is uh, the regular opinion, uh, a modest applause. Someone, uh, Sam Omar Shaye, Omar Shaye, rather, writing. I wonder what he's there. applauding for. Uh, <laughs> so, when you go to the back from that, uh, we're looking for what to applaud for. There, you'll find out what it is about. <laughs> Please grab the Nation newspaper. Mm. And here we have the Vanguard. Uh, front page of Vanguard says. Um, 
Obasanjo Shoinka and others wade into Yoruba leadership tussle. There's been some conversation lately about mm. that. Mm. And um, state of the nation, better to part in peace than through war. The Igbo leaders are saying that on page nine. Oh, wow. And Nigeria needs divine intervention. Yeah, somebody from uh, Mountain of Fire and Miracles, <laughs> Ulukoya, is saying that we need divine intervention. Okay. Um, and then uh, I came to a meet a Fenifera leaders in Akure. I think this is also in relation to the Yoruba leadership tussle. Mm -hmm. You find that on page 11 of the Vanguard newspaper as displayed on your screen. And Godfather is not involved in my election. Or your governor is saying that on page 11. An army strategy against Boko Haram 40. Uh, okay. You find that also on page five. Okay, maybe I don't know if we could talk about that because yes, I did sure. read uh, somewhere that there was some success with the, um, I think it's in Borno State mm -hmm. recently, yeah. where Boko Haram came in and very quickly were chased out. Yes, and yes, they were sort of State. demonstrating that part of their success in doing that mm -hmm. was because they went from the trenches kind of approach to being mobile in, in their trucks. And they were basically saying that this, you know, essentially this is the this way forward. I was just happy that they were able to reassure the people to such an extent that shortly after the Boko Haram people came in, they were, if you went there, according to the reports, it was as if nothing had happened. So mm -hmm. I think it's important that people have that sense of security. And if the army were able to do that, we need to applaud mm -hmm. that. I think we need to give that some some recognition. Yeah. I agree with you when you say it's important that people feel a sense of security because um, if they don't feel safe, it is worse off. Yeah, you it's know. pointless you're saying uh, many, many and, things. <laughs> and then of course the terrorist group will buy into that and cause more harm. Of course, because, because that's the, the intention. People, yes, are um, unsafe, and, and, I already feel it. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was okay. going to jump uh, quickly to the Akintoye story. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently, as far as I know, he's been elected um, the new uh, head. Of the if, uh, Afeni. Europe, Yes, Afeni Ferry Group. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm just intrigued that so many uh, people that we know, uh, Professor Shoinka, and people are showing interest. It suggests that people feel that maybe you know the center is not is not We're where together. it's not where it's at. That okay. politics now can be fought from the side sidelines, if mm -hmm. you like. I'm, I don't know if I should call it sidelines. I'm I'm not sure if that's not more worrying for me that people are now pulling into all these little. Do you say we're well, not little anymore? Tribal groups to groups. make a statement and to you know pursue certain agenda. Um, so which takes you to the, uh, the, the line where it talks about the Igbo people saying it's better to part in peace yes. than to part through war. And those are, for me, those are still troubling because I may be, <laughs> may be old fashioned, but I still believe in one Nigeria. I know many people may not be happy yeah, to hear, yeah, yeah. but I really do believe, yeah, and I, I really don't think we should be talking, it's almost like speaking about divorce when you, when you still have much to work on in a mm -hmm. marriage. So I think we shouldn't immediately be thinking about that. Anybody. Uh, who wants to be constructive right now should be looking at ways we can make this union work. All right, Ekene, okay, do you believe that uh, Nigeria needs divine intervention? Uh, <laughs> has just said that. I didn't want to say anything about that because, I, like I say, is that really news? I mean, we're, we're, anybody living in Nigeria that doesn't believe that, uh, even if you're an atheist, I'm sure you, you're looking for somewhere, somehow, that mm -hmm. will be delivered from the situation mm -hmm. we're facing. So I think it's stating the obvious. Okay, so uh, Ngege mediating Nasu and Sanu strike, you find that on page 8, and then bandits attack police station in Enugu mm. and cut away with arms. Look at that. That is in page 16 of uh, the Vanguard newspaper. That's scary. That, that tells you the state of lawlessness we're dealing with, when people can come and attack a police, police station. station. What is that <laughs> As in how much more brazen can, can it get, you know? So, you know, what is making them feel? Is it that the police are not showing enough presence? Or is it that the, the bandits themselves are, you know, that someone is giving them confidence to mm. make them act in this way? The whole thing is, and, and the fact that they have arms now is troubling in itself. Mm -hmm. All right, we have, um, and that's it for the nation. Uh, we have the last paper here with me, which is this day. Um, FG6, $5 billion um, Chinese loan for Mambila Power Project. Uh, NNPC record 77% rise in vandalism of its pipelines. That's wow. on page 10. That's serious. Yeah, of this day. And then smarting from $9.9 .9 billion, uh, billion P&ID liability, FG risks fresh $3.5 billion judgment debts. Wow. And then presidency outlines roles of chief of army staff. <laughs> And then Army Police Trade tackles at a defense headquarters panel on Wadumi. 
Okay, which one is catching your attention, as they say this morning? Uh, gosh, um, uh, funny enough, the one I, that I'm thinking of whilst you were reading that, I don't know if you've, come, you've read it before, but it's the, the whole thing about our transmission. I just want to talk briefly on that because okay. power, I know they power. talked about hydropower yes. to do with the Mambila yeah, project. No, so, the federal government. Yes, taking a loan from China. Yes. yes. And maybe that's what triggered Five that in my mind. Dollars. Yes. Well, again, good luck to them. I hope they can keep a they track record of that because we don't want a similar thing that happened oh, with, with the, the Irish IG. company to happen mm -hmm. again. But uh, my mind went to, there's a, a headline, maybe you've read it already, that has to do with the fact that even though we're generating uh, up to 8,000 megawatts, mm -hmm. And we're able to, we have a distribution capacity of 7,000 megawatts. We're only able to, in fact, it's dropped down to under 3,000 megawatts in terms of what we actually receive as consumers because the distributors are not on form. So essentially, which was surprising mm -hmm. to me, the demand made by the distributors uh, was not sufficient. So essentially, if you go and generate all this uh, power and nobody takes it from you. It's wasted. So they, that's really where the gap is. So they've dropped it down to below 3,000. So which tells me, I mean, this is where we should be focusing our attention to put enough structure on the ground to ensure that when the, the power is generated, mm -hmm. they're quickly able to distribute it. So it's, it's to so me a, a big, balance. it's a real shame that, mm. you know, the capacity is there, but the distribution but, is lacking. And I'm sure most people will be shocked to find that we're in darkness, not because the power isn't there, but because, because the means the to get it to us is where the gap is. Oh, that, that's uh, quite mm. unfortunate. Here, okay, having said that, uh, here is an interesting caption. It says, Baba goes to Tokyo. <laughs> the same thing that we say, but <laughs> I don't know why they chose to. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think personally, Amaka, that um, I think the days have, are behind us. I hope they're behind us, where we get tripped by of views of people boarding aeroplanes and waving to us and all these kind of, you know, do you I say agree. false packaging. I think, you know, if anything, all this Yahoo experience and FBI digging in should show us that all that glitters is not gold. What mm. we want is to hear hard facts. Like I said, what did you do on your last trip? Yeah. What are the proceeds from your last trip? Mm -hmm. What is your agenda on this trip? How do you intend to implement it? What, what, uh, what are you offering? What are you putting on the table? Mm -hmm. So that we know, we, we don't want to see pictures of you. Of we'd rather this. not see your photograph and just see more Results. of a breakdown of what it is you're, you're out mm -hmm. to do. Otherwise, why are we sponsoring and you to go on a trip? To gain yeah, it's not a tourist uh, activity. Mm -hmm. yeah. NNPC records 77% rise in vandalism of its pipelines. That's not this encouraging is, at it all. It isn't encouraging. Uh, you find that on page 10. Also, a presidency outlines rules of chief of army staff, <laughs> ministers, and permanent secretaries to sign performance bond. Mm. Uh, you find that also on page eight of the nation newspaper. And then um, back, sorry, this day, I beg your pardon. And then the back page as displayed on your screen says, Chim is something, Chimare, Chimaroke mm -hmm. Namani. Ndibo, the reality of virtual nation in the diaspora. That's some opinion thoughts there. Mm. Uh, you could read on the back page of this day to find out what the guest calling is with uh, Chimaroke. Yeah, I, I read a bit about Chimaroke's comments. Okay. Um, he was sort of flagging up the fact that um, the um, herdsmen, um, he alleged, had because we know that there was a killing of a father of a friar and apparently a pregnant woman yes and it's barbaric and and all that and we're happy he's speaking out but some would say okay is he speaking out on the back of the threats that was made to southeastern governors because mm. i don't know if he's been a constant a vocal someone we would identify oh, with speaking so? out mm. in times past um which i don't know what to say i might be cynical when i say i wish people were more consistent we are not playing politics here lives are being lost so these things need to be said on a consistent basis not when your own interests are at stake I, I, i'm not alleging that that's mm -hmm. what he's doing but i'm just saying it looks like that mm -hmm. yeah all right uh, there's something on sports here uh, can i i know you do you have a certain level of love for sports. Tennis, strictly tennis. <laughs> okay, strictly tennis. Anyways, we read mm -hmm. out the headlines on Vanguard Sports. They say, Enyimba Wallop Rahimo FC to advance. Okay, you mm -hmm. find that back page. Mm -hmm. Kano Pillars crash out in Ghana. At least I know Kano Pillars. Okay. I was raised in Kano. <laughs> and then Pogba, racist attacks makes me stronger. He says wow. that. Yeah, read more about That's that. That's interesting. The back page, where you think he's going to bring him down, apparently. That makes That's him stronger. That's the attitude. Then, that's the way to go. Mm. And then our more catchy says foreign coaches don't care about home based players. And that's it for our newspaper and that's it from the sports um, um, back page of the newspaper. Thank you for being with us on this segment of Of the Press and many thanks Ekene also for being with me this morning uh, to 
dissect all that is going on in Nigeria and look at the headlines together. We'll be back here again tomorrow, same time, to do same thing uh, on Off the Press here at Plus TV Africa. I am Amaka Okoye. Thank you very much.